All right. Good morning. What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to the 53rd episode of Ricardo Sturdivant's Tuesday Feelings on the Reinventing the Tattoo Network. As you guys know, we're beaming out live from all over the country. So if you're watching, either drop a comment in the chat, let us know where you're watching from, or um, you know, comment throughout the show because we'll keep an eye on the comments. Beyond live shows like this, you guys can watch all of the Reinventing Network shows, art jams, drawing groups, interviews, and panels anytime on our Roku channel, as well as our YouTube channel. Um, if you haven't checked us out on Roku yet, you can find it by searching for Reinventing the Tattoo on your device. And we have 24 seven streaming content with lots of channels as well. This is something that's really nice to put on in the background for yourself and clients while you're tattooing or in the front room of your shop. Um, otherwise we have several weekly drawing groups that are happening literally almost every day, some twice a day. So if you're watching, you're welcome to tune in or tune on the Zoom call with us just like today. The link to the today's Zoom is easy to find. Um, we, what you do is go to reinventingthetattoo.com, scroll down to the calendar and the Zoom links are right in there. If you're here to watch, our YouTube channel is set up for reminders about all of these events too. So Sundays, uh, Jason Leeser is here today. He has a skill building Sundays at 1 p.m. Monday mornings start early at nine with Drawing for Tattooers led by Jason, James Wisdom. Right after that at 11, is, you can join myself, Gabe Ripley and Jake Meeks of Fireside Tattoo to talk about what's going on in the world of tattooing on the Tattoo Weekly. Later on at five is Robbie Rapol's Let's Talk About Feelings. And then closing the Monday night at nine is a Reinventing Evolution class led by Guy Aitchison. Right now their second uh, trimester is going on. We have a link in the description for more information about those learning opportunities that Guy offers. Right here on Tuesdays is Tuesday Feelings with Ricardo. Wednesdays at noon is the Tattoo Now show, followed by our business course happening every other Wednesday at one. As you guys know, Thursday at six is Tattoo Collecting 101. And um, beyond all those types of things, we'll be doing some streaming from some live events coming up. Uh, next weekend already is Rubber City Tattoo Invitational by Tony Urbanic. And then at the end of August will be Health City. Before we kick off the show, let's thank our sponsors as always. Uh, Alex's World Tattoo Events and Tattoo Supply Magazine as well, the best resource for tattoo events worldwide. Thanks to Raw Pigments, an ink company that's tapping into the source with acrylic-free inks. If you guys want to get 10% off your order, just enter Reinventing the Tattoo at checkout at rawpigments.co. Um, tattoo Now, thank you, Gabe, as always, for providing technology and organization for tattooers for decades. And of course, Fireside Tattoo, the Apprenticeship Diaries, and eco-friendly tattoosupplies.com. Of course, every time before we go live, we always want to say thank you to Guy Aitchison, the founder and inspiration behind Reinventing. He's got his biomech encyclopedia, DVDs, machines, paintings, and more on his website. And that is about it for me. Let's go ahead and bring in Ricardo and kick off Tuesday Feelings. How you doing, Ricardo? Hey, Jason, Vaughn? You can't hide from me, Jason. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm I'm in some blinds right now. I'm like, ooh. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Doing good. Yeah, right on. Okay. I'm uh, do I'm doodling on this uh this skull drawing that I've been procrastinating on forever. Right now, I got some charcoal and some paper right now. Um, just doing some bordering with the splains and stuff like that. I'll be working on this throughout the day today while we're uh, sitting here chatting about things. Um, how's everybody doing? First of all, let's go around the room and just say hello and good morning to everybody. Thank you for joining us, Fawn. It's good to have you on here. I'll probably wrap up today while we're sitting here talking. Down to like this. Hold on, can you hold it up again? Really quick. That's awesome. You have some light coming through on the tree branch. Is that what is it? It is actually about to bring an orange glaze over the whole thing and I think it's going to balance it and make it look a little bit more like purple and greens I've got in the background oh very cool yeah look kind of like gray tone at the first glance you know what I mean like uh monochromatic that will do that they'll do a whole grise which is you know that black and gray undercoat Mm -hmm. um, to a painting and then you know layer over top of that with whatever colors they're working with. right on and that's that's what i was curious about too is if that's normally the way that you work if you do you know uh, a value study as your underpainting first and then allow those tones to kind of shift or build with the color that you you do as you're doing glazes um 
um, I kind of all of those tricks, but I'll start with like a random color, like a hot purple or a hot pink. Like I'll, I'll go with like the traditional Grisalia tricks to start off with, but in colors that are fun. I don't know. We were talking a little bit earlier about that, um, how uh, we all process art a little bit differently and our approach to it is a little bit different, a little different for each one of us, right? Um, you're working with oils right now. Yep. So traditionally with oil, you would definitely do like an underpainting first. Like, do you approach all your oil paintings in that process to begin with? Or do you just kind of paint things? So I laid out like the color and I came through and just kind of blocked in shapes, but nothing like saturated yet. So this right. is, this is what I would call like an underpainting that I've started just coming in with a little bit of extra information but I almost always either start with like a, a, a ground that is like just crazy and you know I start with like very and I, I almost like think through it like I'm sculpting for I work in like curious hero I put ground there I usually just go in like long just so they're kind of settled and then I like magic sculpting for hmm. that's cool. Well, there's I a little break, you guys. Um, we'll say hi to everybody in the chat. Creature, James, what's up? Amber, MCR. Um, yep. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot Allie, of people. Allie, what's there. up? It would be great for you to jump back on again sometime. Yeah, absolutely. Amber, Amber Morgan, Morgan says, mm -hmm. uh, that's beautiful fun. She likes your paintings. Yeah. Just daydreams. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, with painting and stuff like that, man, I get so frustrated with them. I'll have to set them down. Like this one, I've, I've been frustrated with this one for a little while. So I just kind of like sat it down and left it alone for a little while. Um, I mean, I think I've been in, sitting in front of it the past few past few episodes and stuff like that has just been kind of in the background just sitting there staring at me uh, nagging at me to finish it you know what I mean but I'm just like no not yet and it's pretty cool because earlier today Lauren and I were talking about like processing and sometimes things that uh, come up in our life it takes a little while to process them and so it's important not to just jump into it too fast you know what I mean um, and I really related that to this piece today whenever you were talking about that earlier this morning Lauren yeah. so it's one of those things that I think as artists and as people, we, we kind of um, end up uh, being confronted with quite a bit. I don't know about you guys, but for me, it's like um, sometimes you can go into some darker places every once in a while with some of your artwork as far as, is it good enough? Is it, is it gonna be, am I gonna be able to finish it? What do I do to finish it? What do, what's the next step, et cetera, et cetera. You guys ever uh, get into those modes sometimes? Um, I have a whole stack of my base that mode. Yeah, there you go. So that that's a yes then. <laughs> I've actually been challenging myself to like grab paintings out of the stack that I've started the last like handful of years and like brush the dust off and finish them. Um, funny to pull something out that I started like four or five years ago because like as you know as you paint you are processing like with each stroke of the brush or each you know time that you feel that kinetic energy of pencil across the paper each each motion there's like this kinetic flow of energy that happens and that energy is like you processing your feelings and you processing like you have done you wanted it and then when you pull these paintings out even if the painting even if the subject matter has nothing to do with what was going on it's like once you get your hands on it you remember all of those moments and you remember what you were processing in them so to go like a few years later take that and revisit it and now put a whole new layer of where my head's faced at now it's kind of a fun it's almost like working collaboratively with an artist even though it's myself no, that, I love that you said that. That's that's incredible because I, that's exactly it. It's almost like a diary. You know what I mean? 
It's like a journal of the person that you were at that moment at that time. I was talking to Robbie about that a little bit yesterday. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Maybe it was Robbie, some, somebody, about how like um, you internalize these physical things, which are your thoughts and the yeah. release of those thoughts into something. Uh, for example, what you're working on now or fa what Fawn's working on, but like you released the energy with that, which comes from yeah. within, whether it's positive or negative, but that energy is just kind of into that painting now. Yeah, absolutely. That's where it lives type thing. Right. It's like a record, a record keeper of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of one of the things that I was just wanting to like kind of brush on today with everybody and see if anybody could input some of their opinions on it and stuff like that, but struggles. When you're working struggles. on it, Ricardo, um, uh -huh. are you thinking about like, oh, I've got a, I've got a surplus of these negative feelings. Let me get them out. Does that ever cross your mind or you just draw or you just paint? Well, for me, I don't know. I don't, I think it kind of comes up through the subconscious. It's not like I approach the drawing with those intentions. You know what I mean? But I think that sometimes when I look back at them, like what Fawn was saying, that you can kind of recollect and, and kind of reflect on what you were thinking at that moment. I do the same thing with tattoos too. You know what I mean? Like you can see where you were and thinking about what was being said at the moment that you're curving that circle or like shading in that, that corner or something like that. But no, I don't think, um, I don't really approach it with the thought of it. I think that drawing for me has been like this, um, this uh, way of speaking for a long time. We, we moved around so much as a kid that, you know, I was so quiet for such a large part of my younger life that, uh, it ended up being that was my communication like I would sit down and draw and people would come up to me and start talking to me so it was like almost like an icebreaker or like a way of saying hello to people getting them to say hi and stuff like that so for me it's always just been um that safe space you know but I've never really approached it with the intention of get conveying my negative emotions or positive emotions through a picture I have seen some of my my drawings where I've been in different states of, of emotions and I do remember those emotions at that, at that time. And then I guess when I look at the image, it does kind of reflect on what it was that I was thinking, like, did I draw flowers out there? Did I do another skull <laughs> or did I do like a severed head or something like that? You know what I mean? <laughs> so I don't know. Does that answer the question? I was just curious, like, you know, the intention and stuff like that, like if that's a place that can keep something, you know, if you were to intend to take something you don't want and put it in there and then just put it away. And instead of your mind taking all of those negative thoughts, maybe you could just put them away somewhere else. Right, right. If you, if you is, intended to with something like in particular. I think that it, it can definitely be argued that you can definitely set out with that intention for sure. And I think that art therapy, I've tattooed some art therapists and stuff like that before. And they said that that's definitely one of the goals is to be able to kind of, uh, use art as that implement of just, I mean, it's so hard. Emotions are so confusing sometimes, right? And what they were, what this uh, one um, art therapist in particular was talking to me about was that a lot of the times we're not given the right tools growing up to be able to convey some of these emotions. So they come out in different emotional states, anger, or, you know, um, over, over exerting energy to kind of people please and stuff like that, you know, sometimes, or, or some kind of other emotional state, sadness, depression. Um, so they do use art as that form. And I've always found that pretty interesting that you can definitely use it as the catalyst or like, like that stepping stone to start processing and identifying what the emotion that you're feeling even is. So I guess in a sense, I guess we all do that to a certain point. I mean, even, even if you're drawing, I mean, I know a lot of people that draw just to try to do the best drawing that they can or try to try to like achieve a little bit further than what they have been. For me lately, I've started drawing on this sketchbook that I'm trying to create. I'm going to try to have a couple books out by the end of this year. Yeah, I put it out into the universe there. And um, I've started drawing these pictures of these women's heads and stuff lately. And that's been helping me out quite a bit with where I've been in my personal life and stuff like that lately so it's been pretty beneficial do you have your sketchbook candy ricardo uh yeah i do let me go grab i really it. like both of those a lot they each had their own character thank you yeah you know i i can see that being 
part of this process. Hang on one second, got that. Okay. I think I said something about it last week about buying the sketchbook and I'm trying to draw one every day, which hasn't oh, been Arizona. as successful um, as I want to be doing it every day. But I have two of them drawn here. Let me pull them off real quick. Okay. okay, hold on, let me spotlight you. Yeah, I, I really like them. So they're both pretty fun. Um, can you see them? Without yeah. Them? I'll try to move them up a little bit so you can see them without all that stuff in it. Sorry that my sheet, my, my blinds are going crazy today. Yeah, kind of looks a little bit cool. It almost looks like they're behind the light, like the light is not letting them get off the paper. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. So that's been a lot of, that's been pretty therapeutic for me. Um, I've been uh, just uh, these moments sometimes where I have like some anxiety or some anxious feelings and things like that. Like I just pick that up and I start sketching on that. And that's been pretty beneficial for me for sure today or these past couple couple months and stuff like that so yeah and pretty Some cool people use like what you would say like an external hard drive for their um memory right like your phone remembers everything you need and you just don't think about it anymore but if you used your art as like an external hard drive for some of those things and kind of put them there with intent yeah. because you don't normally do that i wonder if that would be effective obviously the art therapists think it is yeah yeah that's definitely the case i mean it's also used, what they were talking to me about was, was for a lot of um, people that they discover that they have autism earlier on in life, like younger, younger ages, you know what I mean? Um, where that can be a difficult process for them to describe emotions or, or convey the emotions even. But a lot of times they'll use it for, for that kind of scenario too. So that's pretty cool. Oh, okay. But yeah, no, no, it's, it's pretty neat. Yeah, like I definitely think it's, it's one of those like fun the same kind of like stored memories kind of stored moments things where, where you were at yeah or like if you hear like a really good song and it's a breakup song or it's like a falling in love songs and stuff like that and it weird how those but it's like it's not a storage really because anyone who sees the art then takes right. the energy that you put there just like yep. someone listening to the song they so it kind of gives it a new life outside of your own self yeah and then that's and then that's you know determined upon the viewer too like you can convey what it is that you're trying to express in the picture and another person might see it and have a different interpretation of it so it's pretty neat to think about it like that too it is um i always think it's pretty cool like with directors of movies and stuff like that whenever they have a story that they're trying to convey visually you know what i mean along with with like um like a, a dialect, like a, a conversation between these two people to help convey that story. It's pretty cool how they can do that with color and with like, you know, topography and stuff like that too. So it's pretty, um, I love movies for that reason alone. So it can be kind of, you know, you don't want to have it translated as anything other than what this emotion of this scene is supposed to be. Does that make sense? And I think with art, there's so many unspoken words sometimes that it can be conveyed by an interpreter like the viewer and in, uh, in their own way and same thing with like like authors you know an author is literally writing down language and stuff like that but even then uh the way you read it is always i don't know i've read a couple books where i feel like i'm out of my own my own head and i'm reading as this this narrator or like a, a person that's the, the from the outside perspective you know what i mean but most of the time I read like books, it's still in my head it's almost like oh, if someone's voice. speaking to you in Spanish and you don't understand Spanish, but you hear what they're saying. Yes. You just don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like that. Right. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? To think about that. About this, yeah. do you, it, like, so like, let's say your completed painting is hanging on the wall. Do you ever sit close enough by to listen to other people interpret it? Yes. I've done that a couple of times. I've, go ahead because like some of my like they're random and they kind of appear, like I blame it all and then other you know like I might have a goal a study that I'm working on 
Um, but I love listening to other people interpret what they think I was thinking or what they think the painting means. Mm -hmm. I did. And it's pretty large, but it's these two that are like, and I love listening to people like interpret what that painting is about. Because for me, I was just doing this study and making them as big as I could. And I wanted to exaggerate some of the textures and things like that. For me, it was like a big exercise that turned out kind of cool. But I always think it's really neat, the story that other people put on those two hands. Like some people think they're coming together. Some people think they're falling apart. Some people will attach a whole story to the two hands. Exactly. Like exercise for me. I've always thought that that was really cool. Like the everybody attaches their own narrative. And you know, they're sure it's exactly what I was thinking when I painted it. Like there's something that connects them and they, they they think they've connected to what like yeah, yeah that sounds right but like yeah. like studying hands Jason what are you working on while we're waiting for him to answer I just wanted to kind of touch on what Fawn was saying like um I've done the same thing I've actually found some some perspective in some of my drawings and some of my art that I wouldn't have interpreted it as that, you know what I mean? And then I will kind of like try to implement some of that sometimes. Like if I hear it, it's like, oh, that's interesting. I never thought about it like that. But I think it's, it kind of goes hand in hand with, I talk with a lot of people, a lot of friends and clients about this kind of idea where, you know, in this world and this, on this plane of existence that we're on right now, we all wake up and we see the trees and stuff like that, or we'll see snow or whatever, depending upon what time of the year it is but we all have our own interpretation of that same reality that we're in at the, at that moment. Right. It's like that, that conversation about being in that grocery line where you're having the best day of your life, but the next person behind you or ahead of you is having one of the worst days of their life entirely. And everything sucks or everything's so awesome. And you're like two people in the same space, but you have two entirely different perspectives. And I think it's always interesting because art is definitely one of those things where people can be in the same gallery space or the same tattoo shop and be thinking two different things, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I agree with you, Fawn. I like that. So yeah. fun interpretation. Like the interpretation just changes based on everybody's own experiences. Yeah. And especially us as, as the, you know, the, the quote unquote creator of the art that we, that is being discussed, you know what I mean? A lot of times the interpretation that we have, the narrative that we have of, of it ourselves is, I don't know about you guys, but for me, sometimes I'm like, man, I didn't even want to, I didn't even want to show that to anybody. You know what I mean? I thought it was just so, so bad, <laughs> but that's also another, it's one of those things that's uh a struggle of my own is like that that negative self-talk and it can be showing me some it. really cool sources and like resources about or like videos and stuff ricardo over time about self-talk that I've kind of reference to myself all the time yeah yeah um well that's something that we were talking about earlier this morning too is like that that um you know uh things that we we perceive as our own reality can be induced sometimes by reactions or, or actions or decisions of, from other people. And that's one of the fears that we're talking about right now is like, what are they going to think? Are they going to like it? And it is, it is one of those things where you have to understand that um, it's your own opinion of, of what's being discussed. It's your own opinion of what is um, happening around you and how you're going to perceive it. And it's like a, a internal thing, an internal struggle. So if you can turn that around and use it as a more of a positive reinforcement rather than a negative reinforcement, then everything becomes more positive, right? Yeah. If it's, if it's a positive insight, then it becomes more of a positive world for you, you know? And it's like just one of those constant struggles, you know, that we almost have to embrace, you know what I mean? Like acknowledging our fear, for example, you know what I mean? Like one way of conquering the fear is acknowledging what truly makes us anxious and fearful. You know, it, it helps us separate those like unfounded fears from those that are like actually like things that are actually warranting our concerns, you know what I mean? Versus what isn't very real, like fear itself 
has to be known as a false evidence against reality. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was yeah. great timing on that. Yeah, and it's just one of those things, and like we all. You're snapping your fingers right now. Yeah. Oh yeah, like the jazz or like the the improv. Like yeah, man, dig it, man. <laughs> Got my jazz hands on. Got um, my jazz hands on. Yeah, Ricardo, it's it is great to talk about these things with other people, and um, it's good that you feel comfortable to do that. I think that'll really help long term. You know, I don't know how yeah. you adapted. You know, before this, uh, before we met you, you know, for the couple years that we've known you. But it, mm -hmm. it's cool that um, you're at a point in your life that you're able to do that now publicly, actually. Thank, thank you. It, it's actually it's actually helped me out quite a bit. You know what I mean? Being on here, um, talking like from this place of uh, genuine concern that I have, I've always kept it kind of closed off. So I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. And um, before I jumped on to reinventing, it was definitely, it's been a rough, you know, few years and stuff like that so it can we can have seasons sometimes and sometimes the winter is really hard and uh you know you're waiting to get that spring date you're looking at the calendar and waiting for that shit to pop up <laughs> so let's do it and just keep talking and like it's cool that um, a lot of people have reached out you know saying positive things about it and um talking to me about their struggles and stuff like that too so that's pretty fun um to be a part of as well so thank you What are we going to do about it? Is Jason talking to us? Uh, Jason? <clears throat> we can't really hear Can you. you? Hear Barely. So uh, what are you working on? Is this good? Nope. It's mediocre. Mediocre. At, at best. I don't like it. I know you don't. Uh, just project a little bit. Um, um, just curious okay. as to so what you're working on. Is this better? Sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, sorry about the, uh, the audio issues today, guys. Um, but yeah, I think, it, I think the question ultimately ends up coming down to what, what are we going to do about it, right? Because to bounce off of what Ricardo was saying, we all hit those points. We do. That's part of being human is the fact yep. that you know we're gonna encounter times of struggle we're going to encounter times of strife and um you know there's that is part of being alive and that is part of being human the question is how do we how do we deal with that what do we do to balance that out how are we going to address you know issues that we have that come up in our and that's where i think the sense of community is very very strong influence i know on myself and i know quite a few other people where you know we are here for people to lean on us you know if you need that bit of encouragement if you need um you know that that little bit of of help if you're feeling stuck static if you're just at a really low place with what you're thinking about and you know where you wanted to be versus where you are like that's when you reach out to community. That's when you've got friends that are artists that you sit down with. You start doing art days with them. You jump on, you know, shows like this with Ricardo, with myself on Sundays. That's where you go for that because that community aspect is going to be more beneficial than you could ever realize. Yeah. So I hope I hope all of that came through on my microphone. No, no, I'm, I'm a big community human being. Like I like, as much as I'm not a very quote unquote social person, um, because I'm not, I, I'm really not unless it involves tattoos or tattooing in some aspect. But there are times when, you know, if I'm hitting a low point, I'm going to reach out. I'm going to hit up friends. I'm going to make road trip out to wherever, or fly out to wherever to go and find that inspiration or to go to meet up with friends of mine at shows just to hang out and talk and like get that inspiration and bounce ideas off of them, pick their brains about certain things just so that I can overcome whatever it is that's bothering me. You know, 
to help pull me out of whatever dark pit of despair I might have fallen into. The pit of and I'm despair. not saying that, you know, I, I try to allow myself to think that way very often. Um, I do everything I can to stay proactive so that I don't fall back into that dark pit of despair because I, we've all been there. We all know what that's like, and it's not a very fun place to be. And um, for anyone that's watching, I don't know about you, but uh, I would prefer to not be in a dark pit of despair if I had that option. So yeah. I have found certain ways to go through and deal with it. It seems, Jason, that you, um, <clears throat> it seems like you approach the situation kind of like separating the problem from yourself <clears throat> and you take all the stuff and you put it in this bag over your shoulder and then you go to your community and say, hey, I've got all this baggage. Can you guys help me unload it? You know, seems yeah, like, like that's kind of. What do I do with this? You yeah. Know, where, where do, I, here's, a, here's a problem I'm having. What do I do with it? Where, where do I put this? What, is there like a, a, a pile of places where we can go and put this stuff? Like what, how do I address this? And that's when you have, you know, eight, nine, 10, 12, you know, 30 different artists that will turn around and be like, oh, dude, dude, put that over here in this pile with this stuff, man. And don't worry, I dropped some stuff off over there too earlier today. So it's like, you know, it's all good. <laughs> We're all here to try to unload this stuff. Um, you know, that it's something that I've always loved about a community aspect. Um, but once again, I'm not a very like social human being uh, in the real world, virtually, very different story. Um, but, you know, in the real world and in the real life, you know, it, it's tough sometimes to actually go out and meet people face to face and tell them, listen, I'm really struggling right now the, and have to sit down and look someone in the eye as you say that. So. It's a challenge sometimes, but there are good things that come of it. Awesome, man. And that's my two cents. I think it's one of those things that we have to do is like uh, embrace embrace the mistakes sometimes too, yeah? Yeah. Well, I kind of look at things in terms of making mistakes. There are experiences that you learn more from, and then there are experiences that, you know, maybe you don't learn as much from, but definitely have a more positive outcome, right? So as long as you're learning something and you're gaining knowledge or you're advancing through whatever experiences you have, to me, ultimately, that's all that matters. You know, maybe you might not have been successful at achieving what you wanted to achieve, but as long as you took something away from that, as long as you learned something from it, to me, that's what. Sometimes you don't always see it right away. True. And sometimes it takes time to see it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, even a uh, guy was talking about that not too long ago about how he, um, he used to use a certain type of blending medium with his oil paints and how he's starting to see now years down the road how that might not have been such a great idea because he's starting to see certain shifts with the paint itself and how certain parts of it are like you know kind of bubbling up or like blending off or uh, you know it the paint itself is starting to migrate and like fall apart so sometimes it takes time for us to actually realize that hey maybe that wasn't a very successful um thing at the time but unless you give it the time to sit down and process it or you reach out to community how will you ever really truly know yep Accepting your mistakes, embracing them. I like to call them learning experiences. Yeah, it's like it's not even really the right word, is it? It should be called education. Yeah. When I think that's an important part too, you know, terminology. Because when you when you start to get rid of negative terms, 
when you start to look at things not so much in positive or negative light, just as simply events or way things are, it can really help change your mindset. Oh yeah, for sure. That's what we were saying you earlier really about that. On that several times, um, you know, a while back, you were like, Dude, "Me? It's... Yeah, <laughs> yeah." I, I forget what we were talking about, but I was like, "Yeah, you know, I still have a long way to go." And you were like, "Dude, stop being negative." And I'm, yeah, you know, it's it's like I wasn't being negative at the time. I wasn't. That wasn't my intention behind me saying that. Um, my intention was just to say that. You know, I am, there's still a lot more I need to learn. And I'm not afraid to acknowledge it. I'm not saying I haven't, you know, achieved a fair amount in my life so far. But, you know, there's still plenty more I need to learn. You know, but there you know always was? will be. Always. Might as well give it up. It's, it, it's the terminology that I was using at the time that I think we I remember when it was. It was on our way back from uh, Gettysburg in the yeah. car drive. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, you were like, dude, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Was, um, that, that was exactly what I needed to hear. Exactly. I think I called you guys on the phone when you were road tripping for that. You did. <laughs> that yes. was actually the first night of the Tattoo Weekly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's right. <laughs> we were using yeah, Riverside that's right. and I was trying to drive to figure out how to get on Riverside on the phone. Yeah, that was that's interesting, right. huh? Yeah, we kept like connecting but not connecting. It was really strange. Yeah, it's like yeah. It's saying we're connected. Can you hear us? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we cannot. Yeah, that's one of those things, man. Like you have to kind of embrace that stuff and also, like another thing is like, you know, how to erase the negative imprints that we have that occur because of those imprints, you know what I mean? Like, like occurrences, like a negative occurrences, traumatic occurrences in our life, they, they leave us shaken or, or scared to even approach it again sometimes, you know, but um, it kind of invite, it invokes that like, what is it like a fight or flight kind of response sometimes where you're like, no, no, I don't want to deal with it at all. I'm just going to leave it there. I'm just not going to even touch it anymore. So it's like, it's natural for us to like avoid those circumstances sometimes. But um, if we're going to overcome them though, we have to like kind of face it head on. So. Just kind of like starting a painting and not having it work out the way you want it to and uh, you're not going to work on it because you already feel like you messed it up, you know? I had a painting like that. And it was just like an incomplete painting, and I just, like, stuck it on some, like, stuck some thumbtacks on the wall and just kind of, like, balanced it on those thumbtacks. And it, it just sat there forever. It was just, like, I laid the ground, and there was just, like, this sketch of, like, this, like, steampunk kind of blimp. And I never got back into it. I never finished it. And recently, one of my like most favorite clients was like, whatever happened to that painting? And I was like, I mean, it's in my basement and the stack of paintings that I never finished. And she's like, Vaughn, you need to finish that. So yeah. I dug it up, finish it and give it to her. Even That's awesome. That limp. Like I want a tattoo of it. I was like, you really like that painting so much. It wasn't even finished. She was like, yeah, I love it. It's one of my favorites. It goes back to like how the view looks at it and interprets it. For me, like I interpret it as the failed painting that just happened to be like hot pink and crazy. Oh, it's right here. I'll show you. And it's one of her favorites. So now. Do like futuristic blimp. She's obsessed with that. So now I got to finish it and give it to her. Awesome. You just have all these paintings chilling by it, huh? Uh, well, I have like this teeny tiny art kit. Let's see, where are the things? So I have this oh, tiny yeah. god box, and I can have like four paintings sitting right here, and then my music stand. And then this is my tiny duffel bag. So I've got like a full art studio. Nice. I'll just like grab and go. I've got some more down here that are started. 
So, oh, cool. but like they're so little, I can just like stack them and you know just pull projects out whenever. You know what? Let's let's talk about the size of those canvases real quick. Like a, a lot of people think that in order to create like some um, important piece of artwork, it has to be on like this giant canvas sometimes. Like or let's, uh, let me ask you this first: Do you find the practice of painting smaller is uh, is um, can transfer over to larger scale paintings for you like as no. far as learning learning brush strokes and things like that absolutely um i mean i'm using the same tricks i might be using smaller brushes but uh, like sometimes you know like let's say i'm just building like a make-believe lamp it kind of it doesn't really matter how big i'm making it it's a matter of like getting the idea out and then once i get the idea out how far do i want to push it you know the bigger right. it is obviously more involved with the story you can get the smaller it is that the more practical and easy it is to finish like you know you could take five or six or seven of those sittings in 20 minutes instead of like with a large painting each sitting might have to be several hours so you add several hours over seven or eight or ten or twenty sittings and it gets pretty time and labor intensive but the thing that I like most about painting small like this is I can just tuck it right back in my duffel bag and carry on yeah um, make it much easier like for me it's it's nice to be able to have, like a tiny like on the go studio. so for each medium that I work in I've actually got like a duffel bag or a toolbox where it's got anything I would to work in that medium so most of them I've got like limited drawing material all the paints all the brushes all the mediums so I've done that for oil uh setups for acrylic I've actually got two setups for oil too. This is my little one. I've got a much bigger one. It's out of control. And I've got a setup for dry media. I've got a setup for ink, like traditional style ink, like, you know, with all of my calligraphy stuff and all of my like drawing nibs and all of that. So like, no matter what I want to work in, I can just like grab a box and go. And I know that literally the entire studio is in that box. So I don't have to, you know, I don't have to worry about not having something it took like probably a year and a half project to get every like grab and go box ready but, but now it's super easy I'm working with other artists at the shop I can just go to like the little cubby hole where we've got all of our art supplies stacked up I grab what I need like whatever like, hold on let me just like show them or highly recommend even like I don't know I'm Bob by nature but I like my art stuff for duper so like whatever idea I have I can make it happen instead of spending my time looking for supplies that's that's really handy thing to do for sure you know what I mean I think as uh as artists we can all probably relate with each other knowing that we can be uh somewhat uh, what we'll say We'll call it like pro professional procrastinators, <laughs> you know, and sometimes that's induced because of the fact of lack of organization, you know, and you're like, I don't even want to deal with it. Like, there's just too much stuff that I have to get ready for, for all of it. Um, so it's pretty cool that you have it all organized. So you're kind of like tackling that issue before you even get there. Yeah, it's kind of like against my nature a little bit, but it makes my life so much easier to have everything where I know it's going to be every time. And, you know, I used to keep everything on a bookshelf and each shelf was like its own designated like medium. Mm -hmm. um, having the toolboxes really, really help. Like I keep saying, I just, oh, but that's where, that's where I really fell in love with working little. It's like inside each of those tiny portable studios, I've got all different kinds of canvases all different kinds of substrates to work on too so like not only are all the mediums there but now we've got all the the substrates as well so yeah it makes it really easy to teach people too when I've just got it ready to go and I can just grab it and I can say here's this this is what it's for here's how you use it you know instead of trying to describe something it's a lot easier to, to pull it out show show somebody how it's done and what it's for right 
that does make sense. It makes it easier for you to convey like what it is that you're trying to convey as well. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be like, um, uh, wait, where's this thing? Okay, what were we talking about? It's just right there. I was playing around with watercolors the other day at the studio and I don't use brisket. Like I have just in case I, in case I want to mask an area. Like, what's this? So I started explaining it to him and he's like, do you use it? I was like, almost never, but I have it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so now if he and I are painting, you know, I can show him how to like paint something cool. Like, let's say you do like, let's go back to landscapes. Let's say I work on some cool pine trees down in the front corner, but I haven't completely finished the sky yet. I could take that brisket and I could just lay it over top of all the trees that I'm already like happy with. And then I can continue to play with the rest of it freely and not worry about, you know, washing out the piece that I'm happy with. Yeah. And when we're done, we just rub it off and we've got that nice protected painting still just sitting there. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Pretty cool, man. Thanks for sharing that with us. That was one of the things. What was that, Jason? Organization is key. Because if you're not organized and you're looking for, say, a specific brush to achieve a specific effect or say you're looking for a specific medium or a specific tool to create a specific look, you don't want to have to spend, you know, an hour looking around trying to find it because that's going to decrease your motivation. Oh, yeah, right? big time. Because then you're now you're set on a side quest where it's like, okay, now I need to go and find my, my masking medium, my brisket, or, you know, now I need to find that one specific brush to get that one specific look, or crap, where did I put my neon green, right? <clears throat> but if you already know exactly where to go and exactly what you need and where it is, it's almost like it becomes a subconscious thought where you're like, oh no, I need this. Let me go. I'm going to grab this real quick because I know it's right here. So I can still continue to have that thought process that I have going on inside my mind. Yeah. Know, because I don't have to think about where is this. I already know. So I, I completely agree with Vaughn in that aspect. 110%. Yeah. It'd be kind of like a, a tattoo artist, you know, if any tattoo artists that are watching, it's like uh, having your station just cluttered up with all your ink caps and there's no spot, no particular spot for your wash, for your rinse cup or, you know what I mean? Or your, your um, the gel or whatever it is that you're using, petroleum or AND or whatever it is that you use to uh, lubricate the tattoo and stuff like that. You'd be like going crazy, dipping into all kinds of stuff and so I might as well just keep it organized, right? funny how much more you know we get like the longer we tattoo the more picky and particular we get about our setup yes absolutely i've learned a lot over the last year i traveled around quite a bit for, to conventions and stuff like that and meeting everybody in person and everything like that and uh, that was fun that was actually pretty neat to see that was one of the biggest things i know it sounds kind of like small but that was one of the biggest things for me was seeing how everybody else sets up you know what I mean? I took I took some things home for myself and definitely applied it in my own workstation and stuff like that too. But yeah, it definitely helped with that. Though what you're saying, but like like a particular setup, um, it definitely helped me kind of open my eyes to this could be done a little bit differently, even you know, and more 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 efficiently. And it helped out a lot. So there's this new thing with my setup, and you guys are gonna think that I'm a ding dong for not realizing this sooner but like one of the things I struggled with because like I my teeny tiny on wheels one of the things I always struggle with is like when I get new hand on the box and I pull new gloves out and inevitably I spill everything yeah months ago that I could just like you know because I set a pile of towels out and I tear them in half and they're right there ready to go I could just put a pile of gloves right next to the pile of paper towels and I never have to struggle with the box again. It was like mm -hmm. I can't believe it took me 14 years to realize this. It was one of those like I felt brilliant but 
dumb all at the same time that I didn't like, think. Yeah, like, do I do I tell everybody? Everybody, come check this out. Come check this out. Or do I just go? Oh, cool. <laughs> they have a whole like uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Reddit, but uh, they've got a whole Reddit page of I was today years old when I realized that. Oh yeah, that's perfect. It looks like we get some good conversation going on in the chat. James Luzon said that I heard that offense is never given. It's only ever taken. Our perspective matters, then you can always change it. Very, very true. Another thing that Kyle and I were talking about while we were playing around with my watercolors is like... <clears throat> For instance, my acrylic brushes, they're all cheap. They're all like middle of the road or they've already been like downgraded from one of my oil sets. Just cause like, no, it's acrylic. Like, <laughs> it's not my favorite medium to work in. So it's kind of like that. I, I, I do it because I have to just to be like fluid and communicate with others and, you know, work, work well and play well with others. But um, we were talking about like the different quality of brushes and I was talking to him about like the, you know, the difference between like a, 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 a synthetic sable versus a real sable or sable versus squirrel. And then I got out um, in my watercolor set, I've got like nice brushes and then I've got my really nice brushes that I splurged on a couple of years ago. And I was like, check this out. And he's like feeling them. And I'm like, notice how, and I like showed him how to like shape them and take care of them and everything. And I was like, just notice how like the texture of that, you know, if you could imagine water running down that, it's just going to run out of those fibers like a funnel. And it's just going to be nice and smooth. Then I pull out one of my brushes and just one brush was like 120 bucks. And I was like, feel this. And he was like, whoa. I was like, yeah. yeah. So um, it's be like, what I can accomplish with like like I said watercolor brushes are pretty nice when I get out the really nice pretty crazy what I can do with things it's like I just Not can't just that, but when you're working with a really nice brush and you take care of it it will last your life mm -hmm. yep and that's what oh, I, yeah. I I wear right through them because I I push paint like I apply Those bristles used to be find another brush from the set. Be nice long bristles though. These were matching brushes. So this brush used to have bristles that were that long. So like I literally wear them down. So yeah. for like for my I get, I get, I get good sable, you know, they're, they're 10 to 50, $20 brushes. They're not, they're not like my watercolor brushes where each brush was like lunch for a week. But it's a matter of, on top of being organized and knowing where things are, having what you need to do when you need to do it. So even in these little tiny kits, like they're they're pretty minimalist, but I have like different kinds of brushes for different tricks. So even if I'm doing something with, that's like out of my wheelhouse or if I'm painting with somebody else and their their set of skills and tools and needs are totally different. I try to have everything with me. Um, but it's really cool just like having everything at my disposal to like you know, when Kyle asks a question or another worker asks a question, I can just pull it out and show. That's rocking. Um, we did that uh, artist retreat with uh, Sean Barber and Nick Baxter, and we were painting, and um, I was struggling getting the paint to stick on the onto the little wood panel, and. Um, Sean comes over and he's like, what are you doing? I was like, I don't know. He's like, let me look at your brush. And he showed, I showed him my brush. He's like, this is crap. <laughs> yep. 
He's like, this, this is garbage. He's like, no wonder you're like not getting any pigment to stick under the canvas, man. He's like, look at this thing. And he brings over one of his brushes and he's just like, look, and just plops it right on there. I was like, oh, man. It's like, that's it. It's like what? It's like being handed a magic wand. Oh, entirely. That's exactly what it was, dude. It just like, it made the rest of the painting go by so fast. So quick, you know what I mean? I was just like, oh, good God, there it is. Yep, it was pretty funny. What did I do with pencil? Yeah, it definitely helps set the precedent for your work and it definitely helps um, get rid of any like, uh, frustration and, and, and complications that you might feel are coming from your ability to be able to create the artwork versus uh, just the, um, like what we're talking about, just the organization part of it, you know, to be able to accomplish it. I always like what people's workstations, like not even just tattooers, but other, um, like if you ever have a fabrication studio or like um, somebody who does like custom automotive painting. I just seeing their workspaces and I love everybody else's like their organiz organizational system, but also like their workflows and methods. And you know, I just really enjoy being in other people's creative workspaces. There's just so many things that like, I like looking around and seeing you know, like, oh, I see the, that tool right there because if you need it for this, it's already right there. Like, it's just, I don't know. Even if it's not a, a tattooer or an artist per se, I just really love like, workspaces and setups. Yeah, a get, buddy of mine. Go ahead. Oh, I was, I'm, I'm now, because of doing all of this stuff, I get lost other people's electronic setups will be like what do you have? what are you using for the such and such and then I get like and I gotta be like so how come you're uh what are you what are you doing <laughs> where's that where's that go what's that, what's that little guy I think that those are really open conversations that a lot of people are willing to have like no matter who you are or what level you're at I feel like at this point in our lives like that's okay to have those conversations like the technology hasn't like we're still in the future essentially kind of together you know Ooh, in the future together yeah hell yeah that was some more finger snapping stuff right there right <laughs> <laughs> yeah boy we each out of us four we each have totally different stuff kind of doing the same thing mm -hmm. you know yeah Y'all do the same thing, just different. Yep. <clears throat> just to circle back to, you know, something I was talking about earlier today. Uh, I think it was before the show even got started. But it's, I love going to watch people's processes because we all do the same thing, but we all use different stuff and we do things in a different way. But until you can get out and actually like watch someone work, you know, it you never know what might be beneficial or what might not be beneficial, you know? Uh, it, it's just, it's amazing how we can do the same thing and achieve, uh, you know, different results by using, you know, a different process. Kind of like, you know, peripheral vision, right? Cause like we see everything right now. Like I can see the window over there. I can see the water behind me. But like with peripheral thinking, I guess like you, there's things that you could be thinking about and you, you think about it, but you don't really delve into it really at all until the, the opportunity arises, um, like in terms of processes and stuff. And then like all of a sudden it hits you and epiphany happens. You're like, why didn't I think of that? It's been here all along. You know, like uh, one artist I recognize and I, I don't know, Ricardo, if you can attest to this or not, but do you remember Cody Hennings who tattooed my arm in um, Texas? Uh -huh. His setup was so thought out so perfect everything was minimal movement minimal thought as to where it would go natural yeah. as to where, and, and his efficiency like in the skin just the same 
but it was super interesting how that efficiency impacted his ability, like to just be efficient overall with the tattoo process. Yeah, you kind of like declutter the mind, right? Yeah. Yep. Decluttering the mind helps with the, pro the, the process so much easier. You're also kind of getting out of your own way, you know? I think that's one of the biggest things is that we have to learn to get out of our own way. Like Juan's talking about, like you just set everything up and you're not pulling gloves out and like shaking everything and spilling, you know, rinse out cup water everywhere. You just reach over there to close over. Jeffrey, should have seen it. <laughs> no, yeah, that setup was pretty cool. Here's okay. the con I had with myself. First time I did it, I pulled like a whole handful of gloves out of the box, like just out of frustration. And I just like plopped them behind the back. And I was like, why am I doing that all along? Yep. Just like, oh how many messes have I cleaned up? Oh, well. Yep. But, no. So there's another cool thing that's been happening, like, you know, as we're like, area at red tree so kyle kyle's working in the warehouse but he's always sitting around and he's always working on exercises with guy like kyle takes that stuff incredibly and he's always working on it and he is awesome but anyway when jordan first joined red tree like he and i hung out and painted together a lot and like i shared a lot a lot of like different tricks with him and it's really cool to just be like sitting there minding my own business, you know, like rolling up my blunt and to hear Jordan directly passing on things that I taught him like two years ago to Kyle. It's like, hmm, okay. It's just kind of like yeah. a proud, like, all right, Jordan, I see you were paying attention. <laughs> but to, be, to see it be effective as well, though, you know what yeah. I mean? Really cool thing. Like, it's cool to see it in Jordan's art and see how much he's growing has grown as an artist since he joined the team. I see him like understand well enough to be explained to somebody else and taking the time to explain it to somebody else. It's like, okay, there you go. That's yeah. that's the that's the pay it forward. Yeah, that's, there it is. That's the reason we take time to show each they show the next person, you know, at least for me. Like I want to so but I also feel more I share more like awesome opportunities to learn, like just falling into my lap. Yeah. I, I'm going to end up talking about Kyle all the time, talking about art together, but he's just so rad to have on the team. That's cool. I'm really glad that that's working out for you and for him too. We're all so busy and we're all like either super booked out or trying not to be as booked out. Like we're all, we're all really busy. You know, when you've got artists that are all busy, and all, you know, fighting, you know, burnout basically because we're all so busy. It's really cool to see somebody that's so young, fresh, so excited and amazed. And, you know, it's a really good reminder. I talk about it in my brain, but like, I don't know if the other artists, I don't know if it's your brain how special what we do really is yeah like remind everybody you know this this is something that we're all about and you know all that it's cool to have somebody brand new to it and still like in awe of the magic yep wanting to be Wanting to be where where you're at and you thinking, I still have much more to learn. You know what I mean? It's pretty crazy. Yep. But it is inspiring. It is inspiring to have people with that fresh perspective around you. You know what I mean? He's doing so good, though. Yeah, it's killer. I'm glad to hear that it's working out for him and for everybody else around them too. I mean, so the place that he moved into is not very far, like within probably a stone's throw of where I, when I first moved to Columbus. So I'm like, 
oh, but you'll be fine. It's, it's okay. He comes in a day later with a hatchet mark in his car. Oh my God. So he's got this like four inch like hatchet gash in the middle of his hood. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen again. <laughs> I can't promise you anything there, bud, but. Oh, oh my man. God. That's hilarious, dude. We're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. Like it, Sweet. Ricardo. Thank you. Thank you very much. Going through and putting in some focal points and stuff like that, and blurring out some more of the background behind the flames and everything. I think I'll clean it up a little bit more with a, a smaller eraser to get some of these darker marks out from behind the the flames and make them a little bit more prominent. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys can hear the cicadas or not, but I am loving it. Oh, that's oh, awesome. Yeah, you can hear them a little bit for sure. My neighborhood's got a lot of big old trees pretty close by, and it's kind of just cool to pollen there from the different. I love it. Nice. My this sister isn't just. Is it though? What's up? It's not even a cicada year, is it? It's one of the off years. I'm not sure. I know it's like every seven years they come out from the ground, right? Well, okay. So there's different, there's different varieties. And okay. different varieties basically need a different, different number of years. I don't know. Would it be just state? Is that it? So like the third row to, so some of them, it'll be like three years. Some varieties are five years. Some are 11, some are 17. But there are years in particular where multiple species will emerge on the same summer. That's where you've got like just droves of them and it's just like sirens everywhere you go. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I hear them, but I, I don't think it's a cicada. Also, the more I learn about cicadas, the more I'm convinced they're aliens. So there's. Dude, I, I've, I've said the same thing forever. I've said the same thing. It's like they're weird, aren't they? They're like little strange creatures. I mean, they're super weird, but they're fantastic. What it is about? Oh. Like little magic. I don't know. Have you ever actually like taken the time to watch one emerge out of the shell? Only in time lapse videos, but I've I've never seen it in real life. I've oh. always just found found them. I've never found one doing it. It's thing while it's while it's emerging. Well, you make a point next time you're out. Keep your eyes open and try and find one that's still just long. It's pretty cool, and it doesn't take as long to watch it happen as you would think. It's like maybe twenty minutes to a half hour of like just sitting and be concentrating. Things happen, but um, that I highly watch the cicada. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. I'll definitely do that because I know that there's been like 20 or 30 minutes that I've watched some show. I'm like, this is stupid. What am I doing to myself? <laughs> I'd, I'd much rather watch that than, than the stupid show. Yep. Watch an alien be born. Exactly. Here on Earth. That's funny. Well, guys, it's about that time. I'm going to start wrapping up pretty soon. <clears throat> I got uh, a lady coming in at 11. We're going to be working on her forearm, so I'm pretty excited about that. But uh, maybe we can have everybody give a shout out real quick before we leave. Everybody in the in the Zoom chat. Fawn, um, can we start with you? Uh, what kind of shout out? How to get a hold of you, where to find you, your uh, show here on the uh, Reinventing. All of that. You know, I tried to dance around that stuff, right? okay okay that's okay. fine well how about we just say hello and like show us your painting for today you can find me at fawn baker or fawn baker on all the socials and um thursdays my friends and i tattoo collecting 101 show on this very network and you should tune in we smoke a lot of weed and we have a lot of fun we talk a lot about work and space and science 
and tattoos and manners. I talk about manners a lot, believe it or not. Yeah. That's my- nice. Thank you. Well, thank you. Now I know for the future that you like to dance around those things. So we'll next time I'll play some like uh, some music and then you can just dance and, and say it or something. <laughs> Born here a minute ago. We don't know where she went. Yeah, I'll exactly, just... exactly. Yeah. Her camera just all, all of a sudden just shut off. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> she must be having some technical difficulties. <laughs> Jason, do you want to so, uh, dance um... around the issue as well? Or? Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not afraid to just address that straight off the bat. Um, hi, my name is Jason. I host the one o'clock show on Sundays here on the Reinventing the Tattoo Network. You can find me on Instagram at Philly Yank. Um, I also work at the Inkwell Tattoo in Southampton, Pennsylvania. Um, yeah, hit me up. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for joining. Always a pleasure. Uh, mine, man. Thank you. Let's see. I uh, will show you guys this picture real fast, a little more close. Um, you can see all the scratchy marks from the charcoal. Doesn't bother me. I kind of like it. Um, working on some detail. Try not to get too dark in the mouth area. I'm going to go through and brush some of that down. It's a soft brush. Um, that's what I've been working on today. And I got quite a bit more done than what I wanted, what I thought I would. So I'm pretty happy about that too. But uh, my name is Ricardo Sturdivant. Thank you guys for joining us on Tuesday Feels. Um, it's always a pleasure to be on here. It's always nerve wracking and exciting at the same time. So thank all you guys for joining in, all the chat in the, uh, in the uh, YouTube chats. Thank you so much for all your, your comments and your kind words. Thank you, Fawn, Jason, Lauren. I appreciate you so much. Thanks have a good day. You're right. welcome. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Peace. Jason, Jason, call me. Okay. All right.